Hey, what's up guys and welcome to today's video and today's theme is something I've wanted to kind of make a video on for the longest time and I actually did touch upon it in some of my older videos um, and this is more geared for the novice or beginner perfumer that's just getting started and they probably hear this term a lot and that is learn your materials and truth be told yes you do need to learn your materials uh, so you become more effective in your blending because if you don't understand or learn the individual material that you're using you're just going to be aim aimlessly just uh, blending trial after trial after trial and not understanding what's going on or what's going wrong or, or what's going right so you need to understand how to learn your material and truth be told no you do not need to be a chemist to to learn your materials or you don't need to know the individual molecules or the atom breakdowns of individual materials while certainly down the road yes it probably is interesting to know and it will help you in the years to come but for, we're going to take it a, a step back and we're going to take it to more of the basic fundamentals so learning your materials what does that mean exactly Learning your material really comes down to two basic principles. One is going to be odor strength, and that is how strong or how pungent that material is when you smell it. And number two is going to be that material's evaporation curve, or sometimes known as odor longevity. And that's going to range from, you know, it could be you, a certain material can, might last like five or six hours on a paper strip versus some last days some last weeks and the odor evaporation curve of a single material just kind of dictates where it falls in the line of things versus when you're looking at your perfume pyramid structure if it's going to be top heart or base note now material odor evaporation you have no control over it so in the case of something like uh, let's just say bergamot essential oil it roughly lasts about seven to eight hours on a paper strip and that's something you don't have control over that is the how long this single material will last on a paper strip now I know a lot of people are like no BK you're wrong I can make it last longer if I add X Y and Z to it yes you can drag out a bergamot type scent by adding more materials but you're changing now the the scent you're you're not making bergamot last longer you're just making more materials added to it to make uh, to simulate like the like it's lasting longer so you so to recap no on the single material alone by itself just the one raw single material you cannot change the odor or evaporation curve or the longevity of it now the point the second point that I want to talk about now is odor strength and that is something you do have control over so for the most part when you're buying all your materials you're buying them raw you're buying them neat uh, raw undiluted so when you smell something raw and undiluted odor profile strength will vary uh, based on from material to material so if I were to grab let's just say aldehyde c12 mna in its raw form and smell it and then i grab something like oh i don't know hedione raw hedione smell it you will immediately notice right off the bat the c12 aldehyde is way way stronger you will probably smell that stuff you can open the bottle and immediately just pick it up and smell it versus hedione you really got to dig your nose in there to pick up the scent so you can tell that these two odor strengths are vastly different where you're looking at aldehyde c12 is you know way up here in terms of odor strength hedione is like way down here and then there's even other materials that are even lower in odor strength. So every material has a different odor strength. Now the key to blending materials together to a unified cohesive smell is understanding each material's odor strength. And there's two ways you can go about this. So obviously you're going to be testing a lot. So if you're using all your materials raw, undiluted or neat, you're going to be burning through a lot of materials. And for one, if you're just starting out in a perfumery, you're probably you're buying a lot of materials in very small quantities and you don't want to waste anything. So 
you'll find in the case of like C12, you know, MNA aldehyde versus hedione, you're like, well, I want to find out what's the ratio to, to balance these so they smell unified. You'll probably in the raw, you know, raw format, you'll take one drop of C12 MNA and it's going to take probably a hundred drops of hedione uh, until they smell unified. That's how strong some of these can be in relationship to other materials. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I don't want to burn through a hundred drops of hedione just to get it in balance with, you know, my aldehyde, my single aldehyde or any material for that matter. So what do I do? And the key now is pre-diluting your materials. And every material will fall into a different pre-dilution, what I call like a workable dilution. So certain materials that are very, very low odor profile or low odor strength, I still use raw or neat. And that could be things like Izoe Super is barely detectable. So you can use that raw or neat. Uh, certain musks are very, you know, you can, you smell it and you're like, I don't smell anything. You can probably use those raw or neat. You can use benzyl benzoate, low odor profile. You can use it raw or neat, but then a lot of your other materials, I would probably start with just pre-diluting almost everything to about 20 to 25%. And that is for one, so you're not gonna be wasting or burning through a lot of materials. Um, you're gonna save yourself a lot of money in the long run if you pre-dilute your materials. So now that you have all your things pretty much pre-diluted to 20, 25% with the you know exceptions of a few raw materials you're gonna always use neat. Now, as you start to blend things, you're going to start to learn your materials and you'll find that certain ones will still need to be pre-diluted down even further. So let's say in the case of uh, Damascone Alpha, super, super strong material. I would never use it at a 25% pre-dilution. Um, the more you work with it and understand how strong this actually is, you'll find you'll want to pre-dilute it down to 1%. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you know, 1% is nothing. Like how could you even smell 1% in your concentrate in a total of 100? Uh, you can, trust me. That's how strong some of these materials are. And the more you play with your materials, you're gonna find what I call like a sweet spot of a pre-dilution level. So like in the case of all my aldehydes, I always start with all my aldehydes at a 1% you know, working dilution ratio. And that goes with C10, C12, and, and the likes of that. But you'll notice that certain aldehydes may even need to be diluted further. The more that you play with them, you're like, well, I added one drop in my blend of this, you know, C12 at 1% dilution and it's still too strong. What do I do? Knock it down to a 0.5% dilution and use that as your working range. That's fine. Um, but the more you play with your materials, you're gonna find certain things have a nice working uh, pre-dilution zone. So like everything's pre-diluted down to 25%, 20 to 25%. All your aldehydes will be down to 1%. Certain oddball materials like this one, which is a methylcyclopentalone, it's like a maple, kind of like a maple lactone smell. I have it pre-diluted down to 0.2% because this thing is so goddamn strong. It's just so strong. And I can't use it any stronger than that. Uh, things like methyl pamplemousse, uh, which is more of like a zesty grapefruit peel kind of thing. Even if I use this at a 25% dilution, uh, I found it still to be a little bit overpowering. So I have it pre-diluted to 10%. So certain materials you'll find you'll have pre-diluted to 25%. Some will be pre-diluted to 10%. Some things will be pre-diluted to like say 5% because you don't quite want to go down to 1% dilution, but 10% is still a little bit too high. So things like um, my pink pepper essential oil, I find very strong and pungent. So I have it pre-diluted to 5% and I find that works well because I can add one drop of that in my blend and it's never going to overpower. Um, yeah, and it's, a, it's the usable working range that I like to work with. Now finding your workable pre-dilution uh, per material is going to vary on a person by person basis. And that's based on how 
much of a you know trial batch size you're working with like how much volume are you actually making when you when you make a blend some people are like well i use you know we'll just say 10 ml or you know 10 grams worth of material when i'm making a blend and that's a lot quite frankly that's that's quite a bit you're probably burning through a lot of materials me personally i like to keep my trial blends like when i'm done with a blend and you know i'm just experimenting my trial blends usually fall right around one gram um, and the reason for that is so i have all these i've got hundreds and hundreds of these little 4 ml sprayers and when i'm done with a you know a trial batch it'll it'll fill it up about maybe one quarter of the way which will give me roughly 12 to 14 sprays so i can effectively test my blend like i can blend something fill this up spray it smell it and be like okay this is what needs to change or sometimes i'll let you know I'll spray it smell it to get an idea and then i'll let it sit for two, you know one to two days 24 to 48 hours and smell it again when things kind of settle so for me when i make a trial blend they usually fall in the one gram or one ml kind of zone as far as total volume that i end up with in the end some people work in much much larger batches so if they're working in much much larger batches uh, they don't need to pre-dilute down that low they, because their precise level is based on, well, I can add, you know, one or two drops of this. And because I'm working with such a large batch that one or two drops of this really isn't going to change much. But if you're working in much, much small, you know, smaller trial batches, you will be pre-diluting things much further than normal. Okay. So you guys are probably wondering, so how do I pre-dilute a single material? And it's, it's very, very easy. Uh, most of you by now are probably have all your materials and you have your perfumer's alcohol or sometimes known as ethyl alcohol, uh, things like that. So if you want to pre-dilute something, obviously you would just take your, your raw material, uh, something that's undiluted, and you're going to need on hand tons and tons of individual you know empty bottles or boston round bottles so this for example is empty so to pre-dilute something you are definitely going to need a scale uh, you have to do it by weight it's the only way because certain materials weigh heavier than other things like uh, this one's a little bit more syrupy a little bit more heavier so one drop of this will not be the same uh, is one drop of this based on weight. So you will need a scale to pre-dilute anything. So, but to do that, you just simply grab, you know, an empty beaker, you place it on your scale, you tear it out, so your beaker weighs nothing. And let's say you want to take this material, which is neat, and you're like, well, I want to make it into a workable 10% pre-dilution. You would just then just, you know, grab your you know, your syringe, your pipette, whatever, your dropper, and you would pull out, you know, let's say one gram. You'll weigh this out until you'll keep dropping it in until you get about one gram. And then you would take something like, you know, your perfumer's alcohol. And again, in a, se in a separate beaker, you would then just take your, your perfumer's alcohol and you'll, you know, tear out your one gram and your perfumer's alcohol, you would just add it in another nine grams. So one gram of raw material and nine grams of ethyl alcohol will give you a 10% pre-dilution of your material. And essentially, for those who are like, oh my God, I hate math, you're going to have to understand and use math and percentages to do your different percentages. So if you're working, like if you want to make a 20% solution or a pre-dilution of something, you have to know, well, how much of raw material and how much of ethyl alcohol do I need to combine to make a 20% dilution? 10% is easy. It's just one gram of this material and nine grams of ethyl alcohol is a 10% dilution. If you're going down to something radically low to like 1%, you would again have to use math. How much raw material will it take to ethyl alcohol to make it so this is now a 1% you know, pre-dilution? And that's essentially it. That's all you're doing. So yeah, you'll definitely need 
uh, a ton of empty bottles to do your pre-dilutions. Every time I purchase a material, I always make sure I have an equal amount of empty bottles to all my materials because I pre-dilute almost everything. So, and that's what I use for my working trial batches. So, yeah, so to recap, really, uh, hopefully this is easily understood and you guys are grasping this concept. Uh, essentially, all you're really doing to learn your material is understanding what is the evaporation curve, how long does it last on paper strip, and two, what is the odor strength, and what can I do to tame that odor strength. So when I'm adding a drop of this, a drop of that, it's never going to overpower uh, my blend, and that's obviously by pre-diluting something that's too strong, or uh, the odor strength is just way too high. So yeah, so that was just a, a, a big 10, 15 minute ramble that I just wanted to get off my chest and it's something that I've been wanting to do a video on. And you know, feel free, uh, comment down below if you have any questions on the theory behind all of this. Uh, hopefully I'll, I'll grasp it. Um, but yeah, uh, comment down below if you have any questions and if you have different you know, methods of when you blend or certain material ranges that you find effective when you're pre-diluting, comment down below and share your thoughts with uh, everybody in the group, okay? So with that being said, until next time.